So, my name is Marina Catherine Cheralambides. I am a professional writer and cover designer. I've done some sci-fi, I've done some historical, I've also done some biographies and self-help books before. My expertise is in fantasy and today I've picked out 22 books and we're gonna look at all the covers and then when I'm done looking at all the covers and I've talked about what I do and I don't like, I'm going to go buy some of them. I already have one on pre-order. It's editing me from the future. I just wanted to say something really quickly about the nature of cover design. As cover artists, sometimes we beef it. I've beefed it plenty of times and that's okay. Sometimes I make covers I'm not very proud of. Just because a cover artist occasionally makes something that isn't that great doesn't mean that they're not wildly talented. Everybody has an off day. In addition to this, the publishing industry can put covers through draft after draft after draft and it's not without reason. Cover design is more than coming up with an eye-catching picture, though that is a big part of it. It's about conveying tone, story, demographic, genre, all in a single image. It is the part people see before they even think of reading the blurb. It's a very hard job. Book covers aren't something that the designer is solely responsible for. They go through committees of people who aren't graphic artists who eventually approve and or critique the work. What I'm trying to get at here is designing a book cover is way more complicated than it may seem at first glance and I want you to keep that in mind going forwards. Okay, I'll let you get back to uh, whatever it was I was saying now. Where should we start? Should we start at the beginning? This is the book. I'm a little bit tired. tired. And I, I don't want to have to do this. Da, 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 I have da, da, da. Oh, okay. So this is the sequel to Kingdom of Souls. Oh, yeah. I remember this cover. I'll say that it's not my favorite cover in the world purely because of the font. Even though they've clearly drop shadowed it a lot, I just can't see the font at all. This right here with the R nearly hits the edge. I think as well as that, I don't really like the spacing. I would like it better if Reaper was maybe just a little bit lower so it wasn't hitting the edge of the symbol right there. That being said, it's a beautiful picture. It's really cool. I can see the author's name really clearly. It's objectively very good. Even the red font, like I would never, ever, ever do this as a cover designer, but as somebody that has, they've done a great job. Looking at the Kingdom of Souls as the original cover, I'm more fond of the way this font is laid out, and I gotta say, this font is extremely rad. I have no idea what the tone of this novel is, but I would guess that it's got some futurism in it. And I have to say, I like the cover of the first one better than the second one. It's not really like anything else I've ever really seen, so it's kind of fantastic for that reason. Beatboxing noises. I can do beatboxing noises. Tess of the Road by Rachel Hartman. This I saw at my local bookshop and I was absolutely in awe of it. I think it's extremely cool. It's got that Six of Crows thing going on where the edges of one thing make up another thing and it's very cool. I love it very, very much. Um, I've never read this novel. It, it's, I, I don't like dragons. I'm gonna be totally honest here. Yeah, so I never picked up this book, but it's a beautiful cover. I think the title is also very cool. We've got that really classic title placement. One big word, another big word, and then the two less important words in the middle. And I think the dragon in particular, his neck sort of leads you down to Tess right at the bottom, or who I assume is Tess right at the bottom there. Just to bring it home, if you are a color nerd or if you are an art nerd, you will know that blue and yellow are classic combos. I went on to Barnes and Noble and these were just uh, the first ones I found, uh, but the cover artist for this is amazing. Really good. It's a, it's a f***ing banger, that's for sure. This is another one I picked up because it's just extremely rad. The font is a bit finicky in places. Right where that R is, they've tried to balance out the long R with the long N at the top, and I think it works, but I personally would have made the font a little bit smaller. It's straight up rad. I love stuff that has that pinky, purple, hot pink in it. This is perfect because you've got that big spot right at the top for your title. And then you've got a nice blank spot right at the bottom for the author name. You've got it sort of like boxed in. I think this is probably another really good example of coding the tone of your book with the cover because the font, it's not 
super flowery. It's probably a fantasy. Maybe, maybe a modern day supernatural even. But it's not beveled. The borders on the book, to me, borders on a book are a very quick way to code something as Victorian or steampunk even. So I have no idea what tone this is. I'm really fascinated to find out though. Villages, forests. I have no idea what the tone of this is, but it looks like it's high fantasy and I would guess it was a relatively advanced fantasy world. I think it's a really cool cover. I will probably pick this up. Oh, what's scary this? Scary talking cover. Oh, what's scary this? Scary talking cover. Oh, what's this? The question here is, how do I know this is 1930s? Possibly 1920s. How do I know that that's this book? How am I picking that up? Well, first of all, dear viewer, it's the font first and foremost. The 1920s and 30s are commonly associated with Art Deco and Art Nouveau. These fonts are Fontaine, Emporia, and Metropolis, respectively. They are designed explicitly to have that Art Deco look about them, and because they have that look, you immediately think 1920s to 30s. Wait, I love Art Deco fonts. You've warped the font to fit around it, and then this character is painted in this very Art Nouveau style. When you see this style around the place, it's specifically imitating an artist called Alphonse Mucha, who is considered not only a father of modern day art, but specifically of Art Nouveau. I think it looks interesting and rad. If I had to come up with something that I don't like about it, I would say that there isn't much of a color contrast. It's all gold and gold is just yellow. And you know what goes with yellow? You've got to put blue on it somewhere. I probably would have made her dress blue or I would have made the smoke blue. Cause if you make it really small and you step back a lot, I just don't feel like it's eye, as eye catching as it could be. It's been giving me nightmares again and they don't end. I remember a time when it was a universal rule to never put somebody's face on a book cover. This is kind of the perfect in-between of I took a photograph of somebody and I had somebody painted for the cover. This is a really nice in-between that I feel like just works for book covers, if that makes any sense. I will say that I do think the author's name needs a bit more beveling. Drop shadowing. I meant to say drop shadowing. <laughs> I'm a professional. I like the like turquoise and yellow, and that's once again, <clears throat> blue and yellow. It's a classic for a reason, friends. I feel like the font is very carefully chosen here because it's pretty modern. Uh, even the font like right at the top of the uh, the cover is like, pretty modern. Yeah, it reads as possibly sci-fi to me, maybe even dystopia. I think this is really interesting. Uh, and if it's not, then that was a bad font choice. That being said, I think this is a really interesting cover. I think it's, it stands out. I saw this one while I was in Waterstones a couple weeks ago. I'm just gonna be honest here and say that I really don't like it. I don't really know what to say other than that. Um, I don't really understand how exactly the splashes have been integrated into her body. I don't like the way that the font is beveled but it's not shiny. Normally beveled gold font has a, a sheen to it that makes it really stand out, but there isn't one here. It's, it's a matte metal, which is very strange. The shadowing underneath skin and sea is appropriate, but then it's been set to the same level underneath of and the, and it's just too tight around those letters. You shouldn't be able to see the drop shadow. It should be seamless. And on top of that, the gold of the text is exactly the same as the gold that she's wearing and it just sort of blends in, like especially her earring. It comes out looking like it's part of the font. It's just not, I want to say it's not good. I mean, I don't even like the color of blue that they're using for the water. It's just gray. It's just, it's not even blue and yellow again. It's gray and yellow. I would really like the saturation of the cover to come up. I'd like the blue to come out a little bit more and I'd like the font to be shinier. And I don't know why there's a fish tail down there. It's not good. It's not, it's not my favorite. I did stop and look at it. So it's doing its job at the end of the day. Uh, oh God, God. It's the cover of this place. Yeah, I have children. No. This is my wheelhouse. Hi, editing me here. Um, I'm looking at this book cover again and I'm gonna be totally honest, I don't like it at all. It's like way too busy. <laughs> 
It's like way too busy. It doesn't read as contemporary to me at all. I don't really know where to look when I see it and I don't like the way the Buffy the Vampire Slayer logo is drop shadowed. It doesn't look very good. I'm not sure why I was so into this when I was recording. <sighs> I think maybe I was just sick of saying that I didn't like stuff and I wanted to be enthusiastic, which is fair enough. Nobody wants to be a negative Nancy. The truth is, I think the cover designer has tried to make it modern with the font, but it looks more like a dystopia. It looks like a dystopia or a vintage dark fantasy, when in reality, this is set in modern day. This is a supernatural thing. And if we were doing supernatural, my go-to for a modern day supernatural and urban fantasy, that's the word, that's the phrase I was looking for, urban fantasy, I use urban fantasy fonts are commonly associated with more feminine styles, lowercase, little flicks, more painterly calligraphy style fonts tend to be reserved for rom-coms. This took like yeah, an hour to record, but yeah. basically yeah. all we get at the end. I can't help but feel like not just this cover, but the covers of the others, the damned, the beautiful, they're all a little bare bones. And normally that would be my thing, but it's just not really doing it for me. Like this dress is a little too photorealistic. I like green on covers. I think green is severely underutilized, especially in a primarily uh, feminine audience. I love green. If you look at the cover for the damned, it's cool. Like the picture is extremely cool, but it's just too photorealistic. When I see photorealistic stuff like that, it makes me think it's a little dated. It looks a little 2000s to me. And then the font itself isn't quite gelling with the picture. They've tried to make it that bone color, but I think it needed a bit more yellow in it to match the bone color. Or maybe it should have been that peony pink. I think at the end of the day, the issue here with these covers is that they haven't been through like a gradient map. They haven't been recolored. I'm just gonna add a gradient map to see what happens here. Do you see how it's like immediately changed the whole vibe? I can add extra colors to it as well. Like that's the wonder of a gradient map. If I want that peony pink, I can bring it back. And if it still looks too photorealistic, I can go into levels and I can play around with the harshness of the shadows. I can really play with everything here. And as for the dress on the third cover, it's too big. It needs to be shrunk down a little. Stick with the green, because I love green. But there should definitely be an additional pop of color in there somewhere, which is probably why I like the skull better. I will definitely be picking these up. Oh, I don't like these, I'm just gonna be honest. I don't like the realistic faces paired with the painted on parts. I don't like that the font doesn't quite stand out enough from the people. And I keep going back and forth on, on whether or not I like the white backgrounds. Is it fun and different or does it look kind of tacky? I don't know. This, this looks good. Sorry, I'm yelling. I mean, first of all, your eye immediately goes to the title. Her name's Second, which is exactly how it should be in graphic design. Second, you've got this wall up that gives you this sense of isolation and claustrophobia that I think is really present in the novel. Third, you've got that little figure down there that I assume is our hero just like giving you scale and once again enhancing that, that like oppression present in the cover. And then you've got that figure inside the little title and then you've got the buildings and it's just, it, it creates this great tone of oppression and, and wonder and fantasy. And it's just a, an objectively really good cover that is objectively well laid out in its text. It's good stuff. Like it's, it's evocative, it's fun. Oh, do we have different covers in the UK? Oh, sick. Wait, we have different covers? Uh, I don't like this. Um, mm, no, no, that looks tacky. I don't like any of the other ones that are more colorful. It's just, it's just a bunch of models. I don't like it. The, the ones we have now, it just makes it look a little bit too pulpy. I mean, for how serious the novels can get, it's just a little too pulpy for me. I don't like it. I'm looking back at it and it's like plum and purple and rosy gold. It's, it's a nice idea, but I think the originals were just much better. I remember the cover for These Violent Delights very well. It's extremely good. It's got that really classic font work that I love to give it the right amount of depth 
you've sort of deleted little parts of the font where something is like getting in front of it. And it's this great mix of colors, man. That red, that green, that gold. It's a delicious gold. And then you've got that black background really just bringing it all home. And then you've got our violent ends. And it's just, it's not, um, sir? I mean, where do I start with this? It's, it, the fire doesn't look particularly good. The font is now kind of like a light yellow. The background is red. Uh, I've just realized these are McDonald's colors. <sighs> okay, I had to cut most of what I said about this cover because I went on for what seemed like a half hour talking about it, trying to figure out why I didn't like it because I really, really, really like the original. Here's what I came up with. Get rid of the flames because they just don't blend in properly, it looks bad. Lower the contrast like it is on the original because I think that looks really cool. It makes it look dingy and vintage with the lowered contrast. And finally, change the color of the font. The font color is not working at all. Skiddity, skiddity, beep beep, skiddity, skiddity, beep beep, skiddity, beedity, 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 beedity. I think that's rad. Uh, you think it's black and yellow with like a touch of red. It's not, it's blue and yellow again. I'll color drop that to prove it to you, but that background is blue and that is yellow. Watch this. Oh, what's that? It's blue. Oh, and what's this? Yellow? Man, I love like a neon font on a black background. I like that green night effect. It's just good. I don't really have anything to say about this. It's a good cover, but I will be uh, reading it. Rumpelstiltskin. All right, fine, I'll still read it. I've just seen the cover for the sequel. Holy shit! Ho what? What the hell? What the hell? Oh my- Holy shit, what the- No, no, no. Is this a sequel cover? Never in my life have I seen such a wild leap of, of, of just like quality. Holy- Bad word. This is awesome. This is awesome. I'm so glad I have these books now. Oh my god, this is rad. Holy shit! I'll leave the shits in though, cause that's funny. It's the sound of the summer, pen on a glass. Woo, here we go. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I read the first three books. They just sort of kept coming. Now they're covered in glitter and I kind of love it. Like, I can't accurately explain how impressive this is to me. If you asked me to make like, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine, 10, like 10 separate book covers for one series? I wouldn't be able to do that. I, I can't honestly tell you that I can come up with that many variations on an eye on a background and then something coming out of the lashes. The fact that there are so many different versions of these covers is technically very impressive to me. That being said, it's also super interesting to me that Shatter Me started at the height of dystopia and the covers have been sort of adjusting over the admittedly really long time that this series has been running. It's fascinating to see the standards of book covers change. I kind of love it. Um, it's giving me the air vibes. It's kind of a mess, but in a really cheerful, wonderful way. I don't have anything to say about this other than I am a sucker for glitter on covers. And I think this looks adorable. It's still a dystopia though, right? It's just such a stark contrast from where we started, but I love it. Heavy metal I'm, sound. I'm not, I'm not heavy heavy sure where this kid is going so or why I decided to do it. Heavy 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 sound. Sound. I, like I have read a lot of Trisha Levenseller books. Boy, have I. Please give me your career, Trisha. You get a job. I, I haven't read this one, but this cover slaps. I have no notes. Perfect, wonderful, amazing, fantastic. Love it. It's just good stuff. It's definitely got a Victorian vibe to it. I love that. Black. I love that juicy red. I love that blade in the middle. I love the font choice. It's so good. It's not over designed. You go straight to the font. It's perfect. No notes. <laughs> Definitely not coming up with this on fly. It's just dope, objectively. It's the full jacket. It's. It looks so good. It looks so good. That's how you know you're working with a good cover artist when they make you the full jacket. It looks 
so good. This has a lot of things I could talk about when it comes to fonts. <laughs> First of all, it's got a really bold color on it, which is always a good choice. You've got your protagonist on the front, but I like it a lot because she's not super photorealistic. She's a painting. The author's name, but the font is a little bit thinner, so you don't immediately see it. And then you've got Iron Widow right there. I do think it needs a little bit of drop shadowing, but otherwise, I think it's extremely cool because the font that they've picked is pretty modern. It makes me think this might be a space opera of some kind. Sci-fi inspired by Chinese history. Sign me the fuck up. This sounds awesome. I do think it needs a bit of drop shadowing, but it, it's, it's rad. It's a very rad color. Uh, and Juran is a sick ass name. We're nearly done. See, if I step back, I can't really read it. That being said, there is a special place in my heart for covers that are all font. This one in particular, I really love. But I feel like it's not enough font. For something that's all font and just with like a little bit of C stuff, there should be more wigglies of the font everywhere. That being said, it's got the same problem lots of titles have where it's just like, put something in between the background and the font, please bring it out a little bit because if I'm not looking at it directly, like this close, I'm not gonna be able to read it. If I see it on an Amazon page at a distance, I'm not gonna be able to read that font. If I see it at the distance of Barnes and Noble, I'm not gonna be able to read it. Overall, I do kind of like it. Dude, I'm just very psyched to read this one. I don't really have a song to do here. Uh... Already ordered this, can't wait. Do I like the cover? I love that it's all color with that pop of red and green. I like that her name is just in a stark black, which isn't anywhere else on the cover. It looks cool. And that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Is it my favorite? I can kind of see it at a distance, but I do wish the font was once again a different color. That being said, people tend to use gold as an accent color. They don't tend to make everything bright yellow. And I think this looks really cool. I also really like the texture. Sorry, I'm leaning in. Yeah, I also really like the texture at the back. I love that red, that pop of red. And they're doing that thing again that I keep talking about where you delete parts of the text. I bet this looks great in person up close. It does not, the font should have been a different color. I bet this looks great in person up close, the font. It does not. Already ordered this. I'm gonna read it. I would read anything that Tahira Mafi wrote. She owns me. It is the 41st millennium. More than a hundred centuries. The emperor of mankind. Oh shit, Scarlet Sinclair, that can't be real. It's awesome. You sound like an old timey thief. I love it. I also found this like special edition. And I have to say, I think I prefer the bright red over the black and like dark red. However, seeing it in bright red now does make the weird splash of wine slash blood really cartoony. And the same can be said of the roses here. It just, it's just a little too uncanny valley. Ah. Oh, she's gonna break into my manor house and steal my pearls. Uh, sorry, what was I doing? Right, this is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. We've got our gold, our yellow, but we're contrasting it with red this time. And we've got that black background again. And we've got that white font. Can't go wrong with a white font. It always looks good. I will say that the roses here look way too cartoony and the splash of what I assume is supposed to be blood, it just doesn't look right. Overall, I'd say it has a pretty classic solid concept for the cover, but it's not really coming through because it's a little too painted. And on top of that, if I wanted to be a little bit more critical, these are Mickey D colors. Fun note, the font for the author's name and the font for the title are different. Ooh, and it's nicely drop shadowed there. I didn't even notice. That's what you want from your drop shadow. You want to not even notice. Can you believe The last it? one, the this last one. <coughs> I love the rendering that they've done for this cover, but I do not like the font blocking at all. I don't know why it's in this kind of a square rectangle box. I don't know why it's hitting part of the buildings and the, I assume, smoke or clouds there. I don't know why it's not drop shadowed. I don't know why it's not beveled. It's not even set onto an overlay. It doesn't even have a texture to it. It looks like it's slapped on there. I also wanna show you the sequel cover because I think it's just better. I think the render is actually better shadowed this time. You can even see that now there's a drop shadow underneath the text and it's not in that rectangular box anymore. I think it flows much better, but 
once again, it hasn't really found its place in the negative space. That's our list of book covers. <sighs> Every now and again, I'll get caught up in work and I will lose track with books. And I really need something like this to bring me back, to get me back into not only the swing of reading, but to read some blurbs, to take some time out for myself to read those blurbs, to really see if I'm interested in something, to maybe pick up something a little bit different in a genre I've never tried, um, to see if any of my favorite authors have come up with any new books, like To Hear a Murphy. Uh, I'm gonna go buy some right now. I always liked buying from Barnes and Noble because I could select gift wrap and then I could just, but I don't think that's a thing for Waterstones. They should really, uh, they should get on that. Thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok, all with the handle MKC. That's E-M-C-A-Y-S-E-A. -E if you'd like to hire me as a cover designer, my business email is in the description, as is a link to my portfolio. If you had fun here today and you'd like to request I look at some specific book covers, please leave a comment, tell me which ones. I love talking about book covers. If you're eager for more content from me, please subscribe or go over to my Twitch channel where I try to stream every day from 9am to 1pm British time. On weekdays on Twitch, I write a novel in real time, play some ambience, hang out with some writers in the chat. It's very relaxed. You're very welcome to come around, talk about your own projects or just to chill with us. On weekends on Twitch, oh, I, I like to keep my drawing skills sharp. So I try to draw a new character from a novel every weekend. The last one I did was Evangeline Fox from Once Upon a Broken Heart. So um, if any of that sounds interesting, please uh, come hang out with us. Subscribe. <laughs> ha, fart noise.